Now this color changers case is huge because it gives us our first look at not one, but two brand new characters from Cars on the Road, and also our first look at a new variation in President Mater. Now granted, the diecast version of Doug Crankle here, the zombie of course, just barely snuck out before the color changers version did, but its availability is so limited right now, like it's only available at a few retail locations in Australia, and of course I got from Carlot Sales, whereas the color changer Doug is available at a lot of Walmarts and increasingly so across the United States. But regardless of that, we have our first ghost, our first character from that episode Lights Out in general. Obviously, Present Mater, that's a huge version, very, very iconic. And I don't want to ignore Sarge here either. It's his first color changers release since like 2015, 2016. So we're going to dive right on in as you guys may or may not know because i posted a youtube short video on it a couple days ago i actually found these in a store which is mind-boggling because when do i ever find something like brand new and i think it had a lot to do with the fact that i wasn't even home i was down in arizona and i actually went to two walmarts both of which had them so that was really exciting i know a lot of people are starting to find them out there as well and so yeah you will see them also in the next hunt video hopefully as well target gets them in because i know not everybody has you know a walmart super nearby but i'd say that diana Girdado here is probably the most notable one in the case just because again you know we've all been wondering how is mattel or even if mattel is going to make any ghosts are they going to release any of the shape-shifting ghosts from the Lights Out episode, the second episode of Cars on the Road as diecast. Like, how do they do it? Do they make them green? Do they make them their alleged original color when they were alive? Do they try and make them glow in the dark? That'd be kind of cool. And although that all kind of remains to be seen, we do have it as a color changer that kind of gives us the best of both worlds, green to black, and obviously we're going to open all these up here soon and test them out. Cars on the Road logo up there. You have, of course, the Color Changers logo. Now, in December, I actually broke the news on these because I had the case list for this. I think this is case Q. Yes, I believe this is case Q of Color Changers. I broke that in December. And again, I said, you know, it was a ghost car. I didn't know what the name was going to be or who exactly it was going to be, but a ghost car nonetheless. And it's funny that they didn't use the exact name on the case list because they did use Doug's. It's kind of weird that they went ghost car and didn't say then zombie car for Doug. Anywho, the stock images for Diana here make her look very transparent and kind of glow in the dark. Like that isn't a pure black right there. You could see that the body is a little transparent and especially over here with the green. I mean, she looks like a clear car, right? Like green tinted acrylic. Very interesting. We know that it's not going to be like that. Like that's a solid black. It will change to a solid green, hopefully. But these stock images are kind of maybe telling as to what we could see from her as a die cast or if not her, you know, one of her ghost companions. And they went with a pretty easy one because this is a repaint of River Scott. Even though they never did him as a color changer, surprisingly, they could have really made some hay with Cars 3 Legend color changers. Anyway, they did Doc Hudson. You have President Mater here. So obviously a very highly anticipated version of Mater along with the Rumbler one. Of course, the Cryptid Buster Mater and cave mater and the first form of present mater comes as a color changer not a mini racer not tomica not a mattel diecast but a color changer it'll be interesting to check out that logo there i do like the art for him a lot and i can't wait to see the full version of that when they release him as a diecast but they have not confirmed that so we'll see what happens stock images look pretty good here pretty typical this is the second time they've ever done a color changing Mater without a hood. The first one in that two pack with Sarah Coggs that we reviewed last summer. 
So we'll compare them once I get them all out of the box. Next up is Doug Crankle. Now there's a lot of controversy surrounding not only this color changer, but the character in general, because to just put it simply, they got his color wrong on the die cast. It should be green. He is green in the episode. He is green on the card art here, and yet they made him the complete wrong color. Like it's not even close. It's not even like a light shade of green. It is straight up gray. Now here's the art they used for the die cast version of him. They changed it. They photoshopped it and manipulated the art that Pixar gave them to make him look gray so it matches now their inaccuracy, which they still are not addressing because instead of making the body of the car change colors, which is what every single other color changer in existence does, you could argue that Tow Truck Tom is a little different because part of his body changes, part of it doesn't. Anyway, they made the brain the main color changing feature. In fact, I shouldn't even say the main, it's the only color changing feature. Yeah, the brain goes from green to pink. We'll see how well that works. Weird, it probably will go down in the books as the weirdest color changer they've ever done just because you have a super easy body here. Like there are no decals you gotta mess with. There's no weird pieces. It's a simple coupe. And they're like, yeah, nah, we're just like, I don't know, it's like Mattel or somebody like said, I swear to God, if you make Doug green, I will like do something really bad to you. Like I want to say something like murder your family. We're going to go for it because this really grinds my gears. Somebody is like, you make Doug green, I murder your family. And so they're doing everything in their possible power to avoid that. Okay, we're making a color changer version of him. We're not going to make him gray to green. We're not even going to like even tempt ourselves and we're just going to make the green <laughs> change colors like, ah, all right, that's enough ranting. Anyway, I've said anyway a lot, but it's because I just get going and I have to stop myself with a strong word like that. But yeah, the stock images look pretty nice. If it changes like that, I mean, I guess that's kind of cool. You can see that the stock image between the die cast and the color changer is actually quite a bit different. So I wanted to point that out. But yeah, green to pink is quite, you know, the big jump there. So I hope it works well. We'll see how it goes. And then here we have Sarge. Now this is not technically a new shift. I know, I think I might have said that, or maybe I didn't. I think I will say it in the hunt video, or maybe I'll cut it out. I definitely said it when I was recording the clip and I will cut that out. But at first I thought it might've been a new shift because of the fact that when they did Sarge originally, it was like green to black, like his army green to black. Then they did Cars 2 Sarge, which has the 95 logo, of course, and that was like the army green to brown, like we're seeing now. But when they did release him in 2015, I think, yes, it was this exact shift. They used this exact art. However, he's now made in Vietnam and not China, so that will make for a difference nonetheless. And you can also see on the stock image here that the bumper there originally did not change colors, but it does because he's in his brown state right now and that bumper is brown. So interesting stuff. Obviously not the most exciting inclusion in the case, but to me it's just cherry on the top because of the fact that we got three brand new color changers in this case, all of which are highly substantial in the sense that Mattel has never done I mean, how do I put this simply? Mattel has never just been like, yeah, you know, we make die casts, like that's our primary thing, primary thing, but we're going to release all of these characters first as color changers and mini racers and playset exclusives. I mean, it's literally just redonkulous to me. Cave Lightning McQueen, first as a color changer and mini racer, Baby Quadratorcasar, first as a mini racer and a color changer. I mean, you have multiple dinos that were only released as mini racers. You have Rumbler Mater only as a mini racer so far. Now you have these two only as color changers so far. The Doug Crankle over here, who to most people, this is going to be easier to find right now than this. So to them, this really came out first. So it's just a huge quagmire. 
And I know more than likely we look back two years from now, we look back on these times, we'll have a diecast version of President Mater, we'll have a mini racer version of President Mater, and the same might go for all these other ones over here, but right now they are releasing the <laughs> Cars on the Road characters and variants in such a skewed way. I mean, we have Cave McQueen, as a color changer mini racer and playset, but we don't have the diecast one yet. I mean, I'm literally banging my head against the table sometimes with how they do the order of release. Regardless of all that, I am super grateful though for this color changers case. If it were Thanksgiving, this would go above all else, above family, above friends, above health. I am just kidding, so let me unbox these and I'll be right back. Right, they're all out of the package looking really good actually I can't wait to start testing them out but I was just re-watching what I just recorded and I love how ratchet up I get every single other color changer in existence I mean it's true though but I do want to express I am very very pleased with these color changers and the timeliness of their releases I mean starting off the year strong all four of them together being disseminated quickly across the US at Walmart stores seeming to be pretty easy to find. Like if I can find them and I'm not really trying, hopefully you can too. Let me know your luck in the comment section below. Now before we get into testing them out, of course, I'm going to kind of quote unquote review them, just kind of take a closer look at, you know, their natural appearance here before we start dipping them. So here is Sarge. I don't have any other versions of the color changing Sarge loose besides, in fact, the rarest one, which is the Race Team Cars 2 one. I got this in a lot somehow. I don't even think I was trying to get it. It came with something that I was trying to actually gun for. But you could see that the brown is much, much lighter. And again, like I commented on, Earlier, the bumper now changes color along with everything else. I believe that's just a symptom of it now being a part of the body instead of a part of the base. Because you can see the base is that army green color. So this kind of is a new shift. You know, I wasn't completely wrong. I knew when I saw it that it looked like a lighter brown than I had seen before. Now, I'm not raving about this color changer but because... Like a dark army green to a light brown is not a big jump. Like Diana's going from black to green. That's pretty impressive. Sarge, you don't really live up to that. But I'm happy that you're here. Your eyes are a little different. And it matches the die cast Vietnam Sarge quite a bit. Yeah, this is, I believe, from the Welcome to Radiator Springs line. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to say here, but it does say it is made in Vietnam. So it'll be interesting to see if you guys have, you know, the original Sarge color changer, you can compare it to this and let me know how different you perceive them to be. Now, President Mater here, we have nothing to compare him to because it is our first look at him in any way, shape or form. Let's take a look at the logo, though. The President of the United States. And Mater Seal. I love that. That's so cool. And of course, you have the coat of arms there, which it looks like an eagle. He's got like jumper cables that his claws are holding on to. I believe the Latin banner above it reads something. I remember trying to translate this for my B-movie set, like my B-movie breakdown. And it wasn't anything. Like it just was kind of like mumbo jumbo, but not entirely sure. Either way, though. Not super relevant. Like I remember, yeah, there was nothing to really deduct from it. And you can see that my fingers are already making him change a little bit here. <laughs> I literally I don't even need water. I just gotta hold them and we're good to go. Alright, of course Doug is probably one you guys really want to see compared to the diecast that just came out. 
So lovely, the brain is smaller by probably a good 30%, 20, 30% smaller, even though that's kind of the big deal here. Looks like he's just smaller in general, you know? He's not as wide, he's certainly not as long as you can see there. It's kind of weird because the color changer blister is bigger you know, I mean, I know that they could make the blisters whatever they want for the singles pretty much, but, you know, traditionally they're much bigger than a single blister, and yet, you know, we got a smaller car, quite a bit smaller. However, we got a happy Doug, or maybe an, you know, just standby Doug. He's not in action. He's not in character Doug, because he's smiling and not growling at us, not showing his teeth. So I guess that's kind of cool. You know, in that sense, you get almost like a variation of Doug. You have like Happy Doug and you have in character chomping at people, Doug. But I'm glad that they still gave him all the details there in the taillights and whatnot. Much lighter gray, by the way. But I have to say, instead of the veins in the brain being like a decal that it is on the diecast version, which the brains are plastic on both, but you know what I mean, this is a decal here. They're actually part of the plastic mold of the brains. I have to say that's really cool and kind of freaky. I mean, that <laughs> looks a little scary. I'm not a big, you know, like body part guy. I really couldn't be like a surgeon or anything like that. So yeah, that's kind of why it spooks me out a little bit. But that is a really cool detail and makes me a little upset that they cheaped out on the die cast by just making it a decal. Huh. That's really surprising to me, I must admit. Like you'd think it would be the other way around. All right, now let's take a quick look here at Diana, 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 Giordato. Cool last name. I think she's named, yeah, she's definitely named after a Pixar employee. But yeah, pretty simple. It is a Black River Scott with a closed, yeah, it doesn't have the engine showing from the side there. I believe that is accurate, but it also is easier to, you know, make as a color changer when you have more surface area, more smooth surface area like that. If I can find a good picture of her from the episode, I will toss that on the screen. She also has much more clear, much more defined headlights here. So there are some structural differences between her and River Scott, but you know, barring any minor change, they are generally the same. And Honestly, kind of opens up the door for a color changer River Scott. She does have the side view mirror here on the side, which is interesting. Just one side view mirror on her left side. River doesn't have any, probably because he's a racer, doesn't really need it. But Diana is just an everyday car. All right, now, finally, after like 17 minutes, we're going to get into what you came here for. And that is the testing. Obviously, you guys know my rules. We go from least to a best, save the best for last. Not saying I don't like you, Sarge, but well, you're up against it today. If you were, you know, in the initial wave of color changers way back in 2020 when they relaunched the line, I mean, you're probably still last. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but maybe not. Okay, so here you have your army green version of Sarge. Quite interesting because of the fact that the canopy, like the vinyl top, changes color and so it you know makes him look almost like naked you know he doesn't have his pants on but they wouldn't you know if they truly made like only this part color changing that wouldn't really be too great so again i like that because it makes the color changer more different than the die cast which is ultimately what i kind of base my criteria on when i rate color changers especially in that tier list video. But yeah, looking pretty good. See how easily he changes back here. 
and he holds some water. Good thing we got the tiles out. But yeah, light brown. Good change. I mean, I know it's not a big jump in terms of the color spectrum and certainly not exciting colors, but I mean, he works. I think both colors are very vivid. And again, you can't really ask for much more than that when you're given what you're given. All right, let's move on to President Mater here, who I already kind of changed with my hands. Wow. You guys got to see that change in person. I mean, it almost was like a light bulb going off in the tank there because he is so bright. Like this is a really bright teal, even brighter than like your brand new Mater. Now I do have a couple other color changing Maters. This is an old one from 2010. And so I'm not going to test it out because we want to preserve antiques such as this. Yeah, color changers kind of have a low shelf life, especially if you're not changing them. Like for whatever reason, it's kind of like you don't use it, you lose it. It's like a language, you know, or some sort of muscle memory type thing. You don't practice, you lose that ability. Color changers kind of like that. Like if you don't keep them in practice of changing over and over again, they just kind of settle in one color and yeah, they don't ever look back. This is the 2021 that goes from like the bluish to purple here, which is a pretty good one, I'd say. And of course, the one that I had already mentioned that came in that two pack over the summer. So these have the same expression and both don't have the hood. It's nice that they made President's Mater, you know, apparatus in the back gray, it matches of course the engine up here, which is also gray. It is a slightly darker gray. It's more silver than the original Mater, like the, you know, just standard Mater. Cool. I also like his yellow stripe. Pretty predictable shift. You know, they do this teal. They use the teal color on Mater a lot, whether it be, you know, for brand new Mater or, you know, in this case, the not accurate color, I guess you could say. And let's put them back in blue, the cold color. Yeah. Really like that. It looks good. That is a pure dark blue. Deep cobalt. All right. See, Doug doesn't even have to get wet. He just has to stick his brains in. What a scaredy cat. <laughs> All right. Oh, a little bit of a slow change on there, but I have to say... That is a big jump. I mean, you're going from green to, I mean, this isn't pink like they advertise. It's more of a yellow brown, orangish brown, uh, tan, beige, khaki. It's not red like they advertise. But again, like I said, it still is a good shift and it's still like a brain ass color. It's not like, like purple or black i mean i guess maybe you watch the walking dead you watch the last of us you see some weird colored brains but <laughs> this just seems a little bit more real right especially in terms of cars on the road when at the end of the episode the brains are like i mean i guess they are like purple i mean ivy's bouncing around with like yellow brains and something like that so yeah it kind of fits with that whole theme but yeah you know i'm not going to poo poo on the color changer Doug as much because I think that in an objective sense it is kind of creative to have the brain change colors like I think that feature to it that aspect will entertain a lot of people you know a lot of maybe the younger audience for sure obviously us hardcore collectors we are mad I mean the real problem with this is it just goes back to the die cast being the complete wrong color. I mean, we want that to be accurate and then whatever. I mean, the color changer is supposed to be a fun thing. I don't really care about accuracy as much with the color changer as I do with the collectible die cast, you know? And that is really the root for all the hatred here. So if they got the die cast right and then this came out, I don't think, I don't foresee many people dogging on Doug, including myself, like we have been. So there's that. I do think, see, it's kind of weird. Look at that. 
I had them in the hot water there for a little bit and didn't get enough and it changed right back to green. And you can kind of see that right now. It's not really holding the color. Probably because there was still some cold water residing on him. But you have this really cool mixed effect right now. It's almost like an infected brain. Yeah, this is very Last of Us right here. <laughs> he looks like a clicker. See, Doug is very, he's a very versatile actor. You know, he could do a variety of roles. All right, Diana, it is your turn. And yes, you are my favorite. Oh, wow. She actually does kind of have the transparent look that was advertised on the card back. I don't know how well. It, she kind of looks like Jello. Gelatin. I am more than impressed with Diana. There's still some black residing on her there, but it's not a solid green. She definitely has kind of like a glow-in-the-dark gelatin type look. Wow, that's very interesting and does accomplish the ghost look. Wow, they pulled that off. I mean, look at how the light kind of shines through the base right there. You can see that they used a more transparent body. Wow, I am really pleased. Maybe with the black, the transparent just doesn't come across as much because it's such a dark color. But with the green, I mean, you could see those lines right down there. You could see into her body. Wow. Yeah, guys, I have to say I'm very impressed with Diana here. It probably is the best color changer in the last few years. This is an A-tier color changer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you guys might be wondering because I, of course, did my Color Changers tier list video a couple weeks ago. How would I rank these? Sarge, you know, I basically did him because this is just like a Vietnam variant. I probably put him in C or D to be quite frank. And yeah, he definitely stays there. President Mater, I would go B. Doug, I would probably go B as well. I don't think he's as egregious as I originally thought. And... Again, I'm trying to rate him in a vacuum, not necessarily taking the shortcomings of the diecast in account. And then obviously, like I said, Diana undoubtedly should be an A, almost bordering on S tier color changer. Now that will probably change when the diecast comes out and we have a little bit more context. But being the first, you know, that, you know, that says something. I mean, you got a lot going for you. I mean, we got our first impressions of a ghost and they are strong. I am very happy with how they did the green effect on her. Wow, guys. Do not pass up on Diana Giordato here. That is a top tier color changer worth the $6, at least hopefully at your store. Maybe internationally, yeah, it's going to be more. But here in the U.S., they're $5.97 at Walmart. I think $5.99 at Target. Not a bad price in my opinion, especially considering singles are like $5 at Target now, which probably means color changes will be increased soon. You know, it's weird that two packs at Target have been still $8 and the price raise, the price rise uh, for singles had occurred like a year ago. So... For almost a year now, singles have been $5 and two packs have remained eight. I really don't, I can't believe that. That is shocking to me. I don't know why Target has not increased the two packs yet. I'm not complaining. I'm sure probably someone from Target, you know, just my luck, someone from Target's watching this video and they're like, oh, shoot, you're right. Yeah, Disney Docket, thank you for that. And then I'll walk in the, the store, you know, next week and yep, $10 for a two pack. What the hell, man? But all right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments section below which color changer is your favorite. Yeah, you know what mine is. It's pretty easy. And I also want to apologize to Doug a little bit. I want to apologize to him a bit. I don't think he is as bad as we all made him out to be. You know what? Look at what I'm trying to get with with Sarge here. I'm trying to make... Trying to make his canopy brown, almost kind of <laughs> trying to make him 
you know, the accurate Sarge. Look at that. Hmm, interesting. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks for watching this video. Kind of long, but there's a lot to talk about here. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you very soon for another video. Bye now.